for humanity. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله All praise is due to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our last prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh It's a pleasure to come to you today and discuss the topic of faith in a time of crisis and I believe this is an issue, a topic, a subject that is relevant to every individual as each and every one of us at some time in our lives go through our own personal crisis. And in discussing this subject today I'm going to talk in detail about a personal crisis that I myself experienced when I served as a US Army Muslim chaplain in Guantanamo Bay. But just a little bit of background about myself. I'm a former U.S. Army chaplain who served in the U.S. military. And actually, I was one of the first Muslim chaplains to serve in the U.S. Armed Forces. It was after the tragic attacks on September 11th when I received the assignment to go down to Guantanamo Bay and be the Muslim chaplain assigned to this prison camp. But Guantanamo Bay, we know, is a prison camp where hundreds of prisoners, all Muslim, have been held in this so-called war on terror by the United States military. Today, there are still some 200 Muslim prisoners still being held there. But when I was sent in late 2002 and most of 2003, there were some 660 or so prisoners. Being in Guantanamo, one of the things that I observed very quickly was the abuse, the mistreatment of prisoners down in Guantanamo. And I raised some objections to what was going on in this prison camp. As a result, I myself was then accused by my own government of being a spy, of engaging in espionage, of aiding the enemy, aiding the alleged Taliban and Al-Qaeda prisoners being held in Guantanamo. And subsequently, I was then thrown in prison by my own government. For me, this was, was a crisis. I didn't know what was happening. I was taken after I returned to US soil and arrested by intelligence officers, army counterintelligence, naval criminal investigators, the FBI, I was shackled at the wrist, waist, ankles, even subjected to what's known as sensory deprivation, where I had blackened out goggles put on my eyes so I couldn't see, devices put over my ears so I couldn't hear, and then I was carted away to a super maximum security prison in Charleston, South Carolina. Certainly this was a crisis for me because I didn't know what was happening. I had been confident in my abilities as an officer to talk about my faith, to discuss my religion, to educate others in the U.S. military about Islam. But now I was being treated like the enemy, thrown away, locked in prison for 76 days in solitary confinement. This was a personal crisis for me, and it was a situation where I had to deal with my own personal faith. I knew, though, as a Muslim, when a person experiences some type of difficulty or calamity or crisis, it's really a test from Allah, a test from our Creator who puts us through trials and tribulations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Quran that we'll be tested. 
And through these tests, it helps confirm our own faith. From the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we read that Islam is built on five things. Buni al-Islam ala khamsin. Shahadatu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Wa iqam as-salah, wa ita'i zakah wa hajj al-bayt, wa sawm ramadan I felt that when I was in this personal crisis, locked away in this prison cell, I myself was being tested by Allah on even the mere basics of Islam. Those five things, testifying that Allah is one and that Muhammad is his messenger, performing the prayer, paying charity, having the intention to make the Hajj, and fasting Ramadan. Through that personal crisis where I was locked away in prison, I believe that this was a test for me just to be able to continue to perform those five pillars of Islam even in the most dire situation where I was locked away. If we look at the first, of course, as a Muslim in that situation, I would repeat over and over in the cell where I was sitting, confirming my faith, saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa Muhammad Rasulullah, that I bear witness that there is only one God, Allah, Azza wa Jal, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is slave servant and messenger. Confirming my faith over and over every day, increasing my faith because Without faith, how would I be able to deal with the situation where I was being falsely accused, even at times being threatened with the death penalty by my own government? But at the same time, I saw it was a test for me to continue to make my prayers, to perform salah in that cell. What else could I do, really, locked away in that cell but confirm my faith? remember Allah, and perform my prayers. Not only five times a day, but the supplementary prayers throughout the day and in the evening. Iqamat salah For me, I think it was also a test of even being able to pay charity. But how would I pay charity in a situation where I'm locked away? I don't have any wealth with me at that time. But there's a hadith that you actually find in the collection of the great Imam Nawawi's 40 hadith collection. And in that collection, there's a hadith, a prophetic tradition, where some companions, they said to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said, O Messenger, the wealthy, the affluent, the rich, they get all the rewards. They pray as we pray. They fast as we fast. They give in charity, meaning that those individuals who were wealthy and were affluent were gaining more rewards because they can give in charity. But those who were less fortunate or on a lower economic level couldn't get the reward for giving charity. But what did the Prophet وسلم, peace be upon him, say? He said, he said, has not Allah made things for you to give away in charity? He said, Inna bi kulli tasbihatin sadaqa. He said, every tasbiha is charity. Now what's tasbiha? It's saying subhanallah. The hadith goes on and says, wa kulli takbiratin sadaqa. That every takbira is sadaqah. What's takbira? It's saying Allahu Akbar. Wa kulli tahmidatin sadaqah. That every tahmida is charity. What's tahmida? It's saying Alhamdulillah. Wa kulli tahlilatin sadaqah. That every tahlila is also charity. And that's saying La ilaha illallah. In that time when I spent 76 days in the cell, 
how did I give charity? By doing just this. Saying, subhanAllah, over and over and over in that cell. By saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, in that cell. By praising Allah, saying, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. And by establishing my faith once again, confirming the oneness, the Tawheed of Allah, by saying, La ilaha illallah, over and over and over again. This is how I was able to give sadaqah, even in that dire time when I was alone, in that solitary confinement. Surely this was a test for me, a test in a time of crisis where I had everything stripped from me. My whole life was stripped from me as I was being falsely accused and confined in that jail cell. But the Hajj, I had already made Hajj, alhamdulillah, twice in the early stages of my coming to Islam. And then the Soma Ramadan, the fasting in Ramadan. During those 76 days when I was locked away in prison, 30 of those were during the month of Ramadan. Back in the year 2003, I spent the entire month of Ramadan, 30 days of Ramadan, by myself in a single solitary cell. Of course, I fasted throughout those days. But by confirming my faith every day, saying, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, by making the prayers, making my salah, by saying, Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, giving in charity, by fasting those Ramadan, that was a test for me, confirming my faith in Allah, and it was a way in which I grew closer to Allah during those 76 days. Now we're going to take a short break, and we'll talk more after a moment about the subject of faith in a time of crisis. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your brother in Islam, Mamdouh Muhammad. You're watching Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Where truth is hidden, and misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's the right to know the truth. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik tonight at 9 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 10 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Peace TV presents 100 million viewers more than 30 dynamic dyes their aim if indeed you love Allah to live like Muslims so don't drop the baton their vision something about Iman something about faith may Allah save us from the hellfire ask Allah for protection and peace their mission Oh Allah, I turn to you and you alone. Stand up and passionately strive. Do what you can to spread the word of Islam. We are a community that stands up for justice. Establishing justice and peace. I welcome all of you with the Islamic greetings. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Meet the personalities, lighting the new light to remove falsehood and to prevail the truth in peacemakers 
next on Peace TV. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome back. Uh, I am James Yusuf Yee, discussing with you the subject today of faith in a time of crisis. Earlier I was discussing my own personal crisis, being wrongfully accused and thrown in jail, and how I viewed this as a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and an opportunity for me to grow in faith during that time, even though I was in one of the most harrowing times in my life, a severe crisis. But we can look to the holy book, we can look to the holy Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he tells us that we would be tested in this lifetime. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِنَبَلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْسٍ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَأَنفُسِ وَثَمَرَاتِ وَبَشَّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran that be sure we, meaning Allah, shall test you with something of fear and hunger and loss of wealth, lives, and fruits of your labor. But give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points out specifically in the Quran that we'll be tested with difficult times. It might be something of fear where you're subjected to a situation where you're scared, don't know what's going to happen. Certainly, when I went through my ordeal, there was an enormous amount of fear and uncertainty as I had no idea what was going to happen to me or what they were going to do to me. Or it might be a situation of hunger, loss of food, or not having something to eat, or losing your wealth, or even your life. I actually was threatened with the death penalty and really had to come to grips with the reality that I may be put to death after being falsely convicted of these heinous crimes that I was being accused of, those crimes of spying, espionage, and aiding the enemy. But there are many other instances in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also reminds us that throughout our lives we'll be tested with difficult situations, with crises. Like in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Am hasibtu an tadkhulu janna, walamma yattikum mathalul ladhina khalaw min qablikum. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do you think that you shall enter paradise, the heavens, without the trial and tribulations of those who came before you? We know that from reading the Quran and reading about the peoples, who did come before us, suffered many trials and tribulations. When we look at the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad, the trials and tribulations he, felt, he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, went through in spreading Islam. And the companions and many of the stories of the prophets experiencing trials and tribulations. Allah asks us, do we think that we will get to heaven without facing some type of trial and tribulation ourselves. Certainly each and every one of us goes through some type of, of test, some type of difficulty, some type of calamity throughout our lives. And really it's a test from Allah as to how we handle these situations and how we allow our faith to take us through those difficult times. In the Holy Quran, we read that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that it's not only bad situations, but also good situations that are a test for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says in the Quran, He who created death and life, that He may test which of you is best indeed. So here we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created life and death, something which might be considered good and bad, to see which of us is best indeed. Our lives here on earth, how we carry out our daily actions, the good situations that we may find ourselves in, are a test from Allah. It's a test of 
how we will react to those good situations. Do we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we give credit to Allah azza wa jal for those blessings that we may receive? Our life is a test for the hereafter. But also our death is a test. Experiencing death certainly may be considered by many to be some calamity. But it is those difficult times in our lives when we may be on the verge of death where we are also experiencing this test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the situation may not even be that grave. It could be just another difficult time. It could be an auto accident. It could be a death of a loved one. It could be failing an exam in school. A difficult situation. A failure in your life somehow. These too are tests in our lives. These are tribulations that we go through. An opportunity for us to again reconfirm our faith. We're being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as to how we handle those difficult situations as well. In those situations, do we seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we seek refuge in Allah azza wa jal? Or do we forget Allah in those times and find a decrease or a loss of faith in those times? So even the, the difficult times and the times of prosperity and the times of good are tests for us in this life as to how strong our faith is. Allah says in the glorious Quran, Wallahu ma sabirin, that Allah is with those who patiently persevere. A very, very important concept to understand that when you're dealing with a crisis situation, when you're dealing with a difficulty, a tough situation, that you remember that Allah Azza wa Jal, the one who created you, is always with you. When we look to the Holy Quran to see what else Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says about patience, we read that he says, Wasta'inu bi sabri was salah. And actually, this is a statement. This is something in the Quran that I took inspiration from when I was in jail. And I remember having a translation of the Holy Quran, an English Arabic translation in the Quran, and coming upon this verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with patience and perseverance and in prayer. So, what could I do in that situation when I was locked away in jail? 76 days, isolation, solitary confinement except seek the help from Allah patiently and make my salah, make my prayers. But it was really focusing on being patient with the situation that I was in, being patient with Allah, knowing that He is the best of all planners, knowing that He ultimately has control over all things and that whatever happens only happens by His permission. We have to remember in all situations, especially those difficult ones, that Allah is always with us and that we should seek help only from Him, Azza wa Jal. When we go back to the Quran, we also read how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu spuru wa sabaru wa rabatu wa taqallaha la'allakum tuflihoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here in, in Surah Al-Imran, the last verse, He is saying, O oh, you who believe, persevere in patience and constancy so that you may prosper. We have to hold fast to our faith in Allah, being patient in those most difficult times because ultimately in doing so, Allah is with us and we then can become successful. My friends, my brothers and sisters in Islam, other viewers, people, audience, today it's been an interesting discussion for me to expound on my own personal situation, going through a, a very difficult time in my life, and how I myself saw that as 
a test from Allah and how I went through those difficult times and handled the situation relied ultimately on my faith. I look forward again another time to discussing further topics, especially this one, and expounding further in another episode about faith in a time of crisis.